Hey there, welcome to Bite Size Piano. In this video I'm going to teach you a few different ways to make your piano accompaniment sound a little bit more interesting and not just so you're playing the exact same rhythm in the exact same root chords over and over again. So these are some of the things that I do when if I'm writing a song or if I'm accompanying someone, just a little flourishes to add here and there that just makes it sparkle if you will. <laughs> so you can pick and choose which ones um, you would like to use. I'll keep showing you what it looks like each time I add a new compositional element to the accompaniment. So I'm not going to use a specific song today, I'm actually just going to use the most common chord progression that's used in most pop music. So that's the 6-4-1-5 chord progression. If you don't understand what that means, I will strongly advise that you go and watch the video that I've linked in the description below that explains in depth all about that common chord progression. So there's going to be lots of extra videos that will be useful to watch from this video as well. So again, everything I'll just link in the in the description. So before we continue. Hello, my name is Francesca and I'm a teacher here at Bite Size Piano. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here learning from my piano tutorials. Please give the video a like if you enjoy it and that it's useful. I do take piano tutorial requests. So if you would like to request one from me, stick around to the end of the video with our instructions on how you can do that. Here on Bite Size Piano I make all sorts of tutorials, so um, go have a rummage around my channel, see what else you can learn, make sure to hit the notifications bell, and I've left a few playlists in the description below to get you started. And finally, thank you to everyone who chooses to support Bite Size Piano on Patreon and other avenues. You know who you are, thank you very much, it's really appreciated. If you are interested in supporting the channel in that way, um, the links are in the description below. So, let's dive okay, in. So I'm just going to go through the chords I'm going to use today. So I'm going to play it in this key of C major. So keeping it just simple, using all the white notes. So the first chord is going to be an A minor. An A minor which is the sixth um, chord of the scale of C major. F major, which is the fourth degree. C major, which is obviously the first. And G major, which is the fifth degree. So we have A, F, C, G. Minor sixth, fourth, first, fifth. So again, watch the video if you want more explanation on and that is, and that chord progression might sound incredibly familiar to you, it's because it's so common, which is why I'm going to use this. We're going to try and improve that chord progression in, in several different ways. So number one, we're going to do something actually in the left hand. So let's say we're going to play each of these chords just twice in the right hand, um, and you're going to be following the root notes in the left hand. So it'll be A, F, C, G. So there I'm just playing single notes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more what I call passing or leading notes in the left hand. So you could go play the next note down in the left hand. So it leads into that chord. And another leading note there as well. A different a different note there so I was using the second degree of this of C major scale so not necessarily just using the note between uh, what the next chord is going to be you can have a go at playing in octaves and then try repeating notes as well in the left hand And if you can play octaves, always try and play in octaves, particularly if you get to a chorus. It just It's just a subtle way of amplifying um, a main section of a song, such as the chorus, where it's usually the biggest part of, a more impactful part of the song. So literally just adding octaves makes it sound, it just amps it up a little bit more. You're using more um, range of the keyboard or piano. Another thing you can do in the left hand is um, playing in fifths. So instead of just playing single notes, you play in fifths like this. So I 
if I play it through a couple of times. So the second thing is actually in the right hand this time is to add what's called suspended chords. So you can get suspended seconds and suspended fourths. Um, and it's usually on the last chord of a chord progression. And it just adds a little bit of flourish. It's quite common for guitar music as well. So the last chord of this chord progression is a G. So if you're gonna add a suspended fourth, what that means is you're gonna take out the middle note and instead of playing the, th the third, which dictates whether it's major or minor, you're going to change the third to the fourth note. So you get this. And it usually resolves into the third. So that's a suspended fourth, where you're playing the fourth note of the scale instead of the third. And a suspended second is the other way around. So you're going to, instead of playing the third, you'll play the second and it resolves upwards into the third. I prefer fourths, I don't know why, I just do. They can sound a little bit Disney though, so you don't want to overuse them and they just have suspensions everywhere, but it's just to make the sound, the end of a chord progression sound just a little bit more flourished. So if I now add passing notes in the left hand and suspended chords, now it sounds like this. I'm going to use octaves in my left hand as well. So another thing you could try is adding seventh, a seventh chord, not making them all seventh chords because then you start to sound like jazz, but if you want to sound like jazz that's a whole different ball game altogether. It just adds again a little bit more harmonic colour. So you're not just playing simple triad chords, you're adding some extra harmony in there. So just adding more interest. So particularly in this chord progression, the 6415 chord progression, Adding a major 7th chord in the 2nd chord, so in this case would be an F, sounds quite effective because the 1st chord is an A minor. A minor and F major have these two notes in common, an A and a C. So an F major 7 chord is basically playing an a minor chord but adding an F at the bottom. So that leads on really nicely from the A minor chord like that. I've done an entire video explaining seventh chords and the different uh, most common types you can get. Again, I've linked that in the description below, so it's well worth watching. So I think the next thing to do would be to experiment with inversions. So again, video down below explaining what versions are, inversions are. So basically, an inversion is where you shift around the notes in a chord and you play them in a different order. So this is called can be called where you're changing the voicing of the chord. So this is, for example, is A minor root position because the A is at the bottom. Now the A is at the top, so it's the top voice of the chord. If I flip that again, now the C is the top voice of the chord. So this is called root position, first inversion because it's the first time you've inverted it second inversion because it's the second time you've inverted it. So inversions, I'm playing around with different inversions, you can play around with different voices and then you might be able to hear some other things that you could do in terms of adding melody which we'll get to in a minute as well. So if I have a play around with different inversions now
So there, I was playing the exact same chords. I was still adding the leading bass notes, the seventh in the F major seventh chord, um, and the suspension in the G major chord as well. So it's starting to sound a little bit more embellished, a little bit more interesting. Now what you could have a go at doing, now you're playing around with voicings of the chord in the right hand, you could have an experiment with breaking up notes. So this is where you can make things start to sound a little bit more melodic. So you're not just playing notes at the same time. And equally, if you're playing around with melody, you can also play around with rhythm. So again, using the same inversions, I'm also going to add um, the fifth in the left hand as well. So I have more broken up. So I have more of a broken up effect. So I'll just demonstrate that now. thing that we can have a go at doing which is we've done some passing notes in the bass we can have a go at playing some passing notes or flourish notes so as you go from chord to chord in the right hand as well what you heard just then I wasn't adding any other extra notes uh, I was just playing notes within the chord so now we're going to add some extra notes. So this is where playing around with inversions will be important. If you're just playing the chord in a slightly different, the notes of the chord in a slightly different order, you might start to hear some melodies appear. This is why voicings of the chord is really important and you shouldn't just settle on playing the root position of every chord every single time. So as well as breaking up the chords and adding everything else in there, we can add some passing notes. So if I just play something slowly, similar to what I played before. So as long as you know what scale you're in as well, um, this is why having a go at playing in C major is a lot, a lot easier because you don't need to think about any of the black notes, um, but obviously using the notes within the scale that you're playing um, is really important. So you know which notes to like improvise around and which notes you were gonna write your chords and melodies from. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and that it's useful. If you'd like to leave a piano tutorial request, you need to click on this video, which takes you through to my official request space. You do need to be subscribed. All requests are noted and considered. So I look forward to seeing you over there.